Blessings and peace, people of God. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made orchestrated and designed with you in mind. He has orchestrated and designed it with me in mind. He's a good God. He is a good God. So it's cold, it's snowy, it's icy, and the roads are awful. So I ain't going nowhere today. Bless God. I love the Lord. Listen, I don't even have to make vacations for myself or really take time off because the Lord just puts them in his plan. And when he puts them in his plan, I just obey God. So I am working from home today. Um, I got a couple of things to work on, but I do want to share with you what the Lord has given me for our daily motivation today. Um, you have been graced to endure. Whatever it is that you're walking through, whatever it is that God has called you to do, whatever task, whatever business venture, spiritually, uh, whatever thing that God has put you on this earth to do, you have been graced to do it. Everything you need is already in you. He put it in you when he, when he formed you in your mother's womb. The word of the Lord said he knew you before he formed you. When he formed you, he put in you everything you would need to endure your waiting seasons, your working seasons, come on, your crazy seasons, your seasons of sin. Um, everything that you need to get through is in you. He has graced you for it. That's what the Lord was reminding me of last night, that he's graced me for it. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, Sugar Bear. Um, I'm so excited about what God is doing in our lives. And for those that have the courage to obey God, all you have to do is obey God. You don't have to worry about the details. You don't got to worry about your neighbor because the provisions are going to come as you obey God. You don't have to see the full staircase. All you got to do is take step one. And as you take step one, step two is going to come. Step three is going to come. All you have to do is continue to do what it is that God has called you to do each day. Day. Do not worry. Do not doubt. Do not be dismayed. Wait in full faith. You have been graced to do what it is, to be able to endure the workload. Have you ever heard somebody say, girl, couldn't be me, honey. Couldn't be me. I'm not going to be able to do it. It wouldn't be for me. Yes, because they have not been graced to do it. Because you can look at their life and see some things and be like, girl, couldn't have been me. No, but God has graced you to endure the kind of mama that you have, the kind of daddy, the single mother life, the single father life. You have been graced to do it. How do I know? Because when I think about the cross, and I think about Jesus on the cross and we listen to how he was pierced and beat and all the things. And I just be like, whoo, couldn't have been me. My God, listen, it's who Jesus couldn't. Have, you know, a lot of us, we struggle when our kids go through small things. We couldn't have sent our son to die for, for a crazy world. We couldn't have done it. But he was graced to do it. He was able, his body was built to endure the pain that he had to endure. My God, your heart has been built to endure the rejection that you must face in order to get to the next level. You have to be rejected by friends, by family, by people at your church. All those things come. Everybody cannot agree with you because at some point you have to obey the voice of God. And it won't be in alignment to what everybody else is saying because you have to learn how to obey the voice of God beyond the voice of people and beyond the influence of people. So I just wanted to come and encourage somebody and let you know you're going to make it through this season. The Bible says endure hardness like a good soldier. You can get through whatever it is that God has called you to walk through. He's building something in you. You have been graced to do it. People look at you and they don't understand how you still kick in, how you still dealing with that. That's crazy, girl. I wouldn't be, honey, couldn't be me. But that's because it's not them. But God has built you to do whatever it is. The people in your life are ordained. Your seasons of sin are ordained. Am I telling you to sin? No, I'm not telling you to sin. You know I'm not telling you to sin. But I'm just letting you know that we're beating ourselves up for things that we can't call ourselves out of. You don't know what God is going to use and how he's going to use it. But he's graced you. You're a single mother and it's hard and you're tired of being up all night and you're struggling with all the things that you have to go through being a single mother, you've been graced. I don't know what to do with this child. You've been graced for that child. 
My God, I'm tired of working long hours. You're still doing it because you've been graced to do it. The Lord put in you everything you were going to need. And whenever it gets hard, the Bible says, cast your cares upon me. So the Lord wants you to say, God, help me. This is, this is hard. He's waiting to hear your voice. Lord, I, I want to get through this night. We're looking at life too big. Ooh, this is just too much. You want me to be clean for six for the, for the rest of my life? I've been drinking and smoking and, and doing this for, for 62 years. But at some point, you have to take it day by day. God, get me through today. And if a day is too big, God, get me through this next hour with this situation because you've graced me to have these kind of parents. You've graced me to have these kind of kids. God, if you get me through this next hour, then the next hour he's got you through. Thank you, God. Don't forget to thank God when he gets you through. Thank you, God, that you got me through that last hour. God, get me through the next hour. Get me through this moment. Get me through this test. Get me through this trial. And then, God, I thank you for getting me through that moment. I thank you for being my provider. Don't look at it like, oh, all the bills I do. No, God, thank you for paying that bill. Thank you for food on the table today. I don't know how we're going to eat tomorrow. You're worrying about God's business. You have been graced to do whatever task, no matter how big God, you want me to be a mother, you want me to be a wife, you want me to be a minister, you want me to be a book writer, you want me to be a, a, a community activist, you want me to be a business owner, you want, me, you want me to do all of these things because he's graced you. The Bible says to much whom is given, much is required. See, God didn't just give you the, the, the ability to do it. He also built in the grace, the fortitude, the mindset. Everybody doesn't have the mindset. I promise I struggle with that because it's confusing to me. Like, why ain't y'all getting it? But then I had to remember they don't have the mindset to go along. You have to have the work ethic. How is she late night, early morning? You up late and you up, uh, you, you up late and you up early. How you don't hardly get no sleep. You've been graced to do it. Can you teach me how to do it? Some of the things on your life, you can't teach nobody Ooh, because it's the anointing that comes from the Lord. You can teach them a portion, but the anointing, I can't give you my anointing. That just, it came from God. And if the Lord allows me to lay hands and to impart what he's put on me, then bless God. But at the end of the day, you have been graced to think like you think. The things that keep you up at night, you have been graced to stay up and to be able to get up the next day and do what you need to do. I promise you, sometimes it's like, whoo, Lord Jesus. But I only get two or three, maybe four hours of sleep. But then when I wake up, I'm still energized for my day because I've been graced to do it in this season. And the Lord shifts. He shifts you in different seasons in his grace and what he's calling you to do. When it becomes too hard and it becomes too crazy and it becomes like, I'm not even, when you know that the grace of God is on you, you're able to withstand. You're able to endure. Even though I'm not saying it's not going to be hard. I'm saying you're able to endure. You won't break. You're bending. You're able to be like, whoo, my goodness, Lord, help me. Give me some strength. Get me through this thing. Come on. But because we have to continue to learn to lean, trust, and depend on him so that it's not on your own strength. No, you can't do it on your own strength. You have to rely on the Lord. God, get me through this moment. Get me through this marriage. I promise you, listen, I have had to learn to lean on God in those tough moments. This is hard, God. But if you don't get me through this night, I won't get through. If you don't keep my mind in this situation, God, I won't get through. When you do that, you're putting the weight back on God, first of all. You're putting the weight back on God and you're putting it back into proper perspective. You're saying, I'm not the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm not going to worry because then when I go into worry, then I'm doubting God. I'm not going to get stressed out because then that's just a whole nother thing. But I'm going to say, God, this is hard. You have to learn to be honest with God. The same way we can call our friends and be honest. Girl, honey, he done got on my nerves. He's ugly. His mama's dumb. Honey, you same way we done learn how to, how to go to God. Listen, I'm calling your bro up, bro. Listen, my wife getting on my nerve, whatever. The same way you learn to be honest with people. You have to learn to be honest with God. He can he can handle it. It's okay. You can tell him whatever is on your heart and whatever is on your mind. But you also have to get in position because you're not just talking to God. God is talking back to you. You have to be willing to get in position to hear from God. A lot of times you're like, you know, oh, you know, I can't hear God. But you ain't putting yourself in position and nor is your heart in position to hear God. You already have a made up mind. Ooh, 
Jesus. You can't already have a made up mind because you're not going to hear from God. The Lord is sending prophets. He's sending dreams. He's sending visions. He's letting the, the TV show that you're watching. He's saying the message through the TV show. You keep watching uh, YouTube clips that got talking about the same thing, but you just, you don't even, you don't even, you're not receiving it because your heart is not in right position and posture to hear from God. God, what are you saying? Allow me to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Allow me to have an obedient heart. Allow me to have feet that are ready to go forth. Allow me to have hands that are ready to do the work. You have to be willing to be in position to hear from God. You cannot be in your emotions. If you get all ho oh, about the situation, you, you can't hear God. Let's think about Abraham when the Lord told him to sacrifice his son and he went and he was getting ready to do it. If he would have been so busy, oh God, that's my son that you gave me, God, and I don't even understand. This don't even make no sense. If you went, if he went through all of that, he wouldn't have been able to hear the Lord say, Abraham, Abraham. See, he said his name two times, so he might have been a little caught up. He might have been focused, but he could have been in his emotions. But at the end of the day, the second time the Lord called his name, he heard clearly, Abraham, Abraham, don't kill your son. There's a ram in the bush. The Lord is sending a ram in the bush in this season. The very thing that you thought you was going to have to sacrifice, you won't have to do it. But God wanted to know, were, were you willing were you willing? Were you willing to lay that thing down? Were you willing? Good morning, Miss Tina. Were you willing to do what he called you to do? Were you willing to do the very thing that people didn't understand? Were you willing to go if he called you? Were you willing? He wants you see that test for Abraham was not about will you was not about um killing his son. It was about the willingness and obedience in his heart to trust God. See, some of us, we're struggling with a thing and God is just calling you. He's saying, hey, I want you to trust me. I want you to rely on me. I want you to depend on me in that area of your life. Are you willing? Oh, God, I bless your name. Are you willing to obey God when it's the thing that you love? Are you willing to obey God if you're going to have to be persecuted, talked about, misunderstood, and mistreated? Are you willing to obey God when it doesn't even make sense to you, but you know there's not only have you heard it, not only have, but it's a tugging on your spirit that just won't let you go. That's that grace. God has graced you. He's put a love in your heart. There's some people that have been in marriages and their husbands have not done right by them. They've cheated. They've done all kinds of other things, but there's a grace on it. I want to move on, but God just won't let me go. There's a grace on it. My God. Who Jesus. Why are you standing at that church? That's crazy. Blah, 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 blah. There's a grace on my life to be in the position that God has called me to, even with the opposition. Who I love God, y'all. God is so faithful. He's so good to us. Whew. But that was my message for this morning. I pray that it encouraged you. I pray that it blessed you. Feel free to share the word of the Lord this morning so that we all can continue to get through this season. But the word of the Lord is you have been graceful. What it is that you are going through, your tests, your trials, and your blessings, people of God. I love you all. Today is Thursday. Okay, I had to figure out the day. Today is Thursday, so join us tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on the Makeover Transformation Church page. There is a word from the Lord. I'm excited about that. Then join us Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, the Clarksville, Indiana area, the Kentuckiana area is what they call it. Join us if you want to come in person. We would love to have you. 625 Eastern Boulevard, Clarksville, Indiana. Um, if you are interested in um, joining on with broadcasting, we've been talking about advertising. I'm excited. The Makeover Ministry has been picked up by Preach the Word Worldwide Network. And so we are looking for people that want to advertise. I would love to showcase your small business. We have very affordable advertising rates. Feel free to inbox me um, or you can email me at AJ 
AJ at Makeover TC. T is in transformation. C is in church. dot org. Um, I would love to help you get your get your small business out to this big 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 world. I also do life coaching or spiritual counsel, whichever one you call it. Um, I do have a whole program set up. So if you are interested in knowing more about that, please feel free to inbox me or email me at the same email address. Follow us on YouTube at Makeover Ministry. Follow us on TikTok at Makeover Ministry. That is all that I have for today, you all. I love you all. Be encouraged. Have a great day on purpose. This is a day that you'll never see again. No need to be frustrated. No need to be worried. The Lord already knew everything that happened in this day, and he's already a, He's already built grace in it for you to go through. Blessings and peace, people of God.